ಮಾಂಗ್ಯಾಂತಮೇರಂದಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಾ ಶಾಖೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ಮಿಳಿತೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೆ ನಮ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೇಷ್ಟಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ಶೇಷ ಶುಭವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ಸಿತಾರಣೆ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತಿರೂ ವೈಸ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಪತಿತ ನಮ ಪಾವನೆ ಭೀ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೇತ್ ಗಲಾಧರ್ ಶಿವ ಸಾಧಿ ಗೌರ್ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ಕಾಂಡಿ ಫಾರ್ ಗಿ ಮೀ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಬಲ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೈ ಲ್ಯಾಪ್ಟಾಪ್ ಸೊನಿ ವಿ ಗಾಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ನಾ ಸೊ ಸಮಿಟಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೀಡ್ ರಬ್ಜಿ ಯು ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಲೋ ಲೋ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಟ್ ಬಿ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೋ ಹಾ ನೌ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಬೆಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಲೋ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೋ ಪ್ರಭುಜಿ ಸೋ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ಗಂಗಾ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಮಾತಾ ಜಿ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಓಕೆ ಟು ಯು ಯೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೀಮ್ಸ್ ಫೈನ್ ಮಾತಾ ಜಿ ಓಕೆ ಫೈನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ Okay. But still, I'll make some arrangement to make it more loud. More loud. Yes, it's, it's, it's clear, Prabhuji. It's clear now. I think now my voice yes. will be more clear. Yes, 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 Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Hari Hari. Okay, so we'll start with text 14. Somebody will read text 14 translation. Text 14 translation. Udava said, O Vidura, when I was thus favored at every moment by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and addressed by him with great affection, my words failed in tears and the hairs on my body erupted. After smearing my tears, I, with folded hands, spoke like this. Yeah. So now Uddhavji is speaking about uh, his interaction with Krishna. That how uh, when Lord addressed, then I just got tears of ecstasy. And then further he continues. Koini isite pade saroja bhajam. Koini isite pade saroja bhajam. Sudurlabho arte suchatur apiha. Sudurlabho arte suchathe apiha. Oh, so sorry. Tathapinaham pramanomi bhuman. Bhavat, bhavat padam bhoj janeswanot sukaha. Okay. So please read the translation purport. O oh my Lord, devotees who engage in the transcendental loving service of your lotus have no difficulty in achieving anything within the realm of the four principles of religiosity, economic development, sense gratification and liberation. But, O oh Great One, as far as I am concerned, I have preferred only to engage in the loving service of your lotus feet. Perfect. Those who are associated with the Lord at the Vakanta planets achieve all the bodily features of the Lord and appear to be the same as Lord Vishnu. Such liberation is called Sarupya Mukti, which is one of the five kinds of liberation. The devotees engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord never accept the Sayujya Mukti or merging in the rays of the Lord called the Brahma Jyoti. The devotees can achieve not only liberation but any success in the realm of religiosity, economic development, or sense gratification up to the standard of the demigods in the heavenly planets. But such a pure devotee as Uddhav refuses to accept all such facilities. A pure devotee wants simply to engage in the service of the Lord and does not consider his own personal benefit. So as far as devotee is concerned, he doesn't worry about dharma, artha, kama and moksha. He can get all the results very easily. So in the last verse of 8th chapter of Bhagavad Gita also, Krishna speaks. That my devotee is not bereft of 
any results coming from karma yoga, gyan yoga, sankh yoga, this and that, anything. So many times we are not convinced about it. Then what happens is devotees start doing so many other things apart from pure devotion service also. So we have seen sometimes in our devotee community also that now currently this Savan month is going on. So still devotees go out to Lord Shiva temple and they go and worship Lord Shiva. And now suddenly worship Lord Shiva is not condemned. But worshipping Lord Shiva like a demigod is condemned, not like Acharya, because he's a Acharya of a Rudra Sampradaya. But the point is that still those tendencies or those misconceptions are there that there is something which Lord Shiva can give, Krishna cannot give. Then what happens is devotees also get attracted to worship so many of the demigods <clears throat> with a desire to get some material benefits. But as far as devotees are concerned, what to say of dharma or the kaam, even those who are considered very superior in the Vedic uh, Varnasram, the sannyasis they aspire for moksha, sarupa mukti. Devotees even do desire that. What to say of designing for Sarupa Mukti? Devotees don't want other four kinds of muktis also provided. Seva is not there. Saloka Sasti Sami Pa Sarupe Kamaputa Diyamanam Nagananti Vinamat Sevanam Jana. So Vinamat Sevanam Jana. If devotees don't get opportunity to serve, they won't like to even accept Sarupa Sami Pa Sarsti or Saloka. All these four types of uh, uh, muktis. Because devotees want only service. And that is why uh, in this particular verse also, Udavji says, I prefer only to engage in the loving service of a lotus feet. That's all. If I'm getting service for Krishna, to Krishna and his devotees, that is perfection of life. So devotees don't want anything else. So he speaks the same thing here, Udav. Okay, so this is like very famous verse. You can repeat after me. Karmanyani hasse bhavo bhavasse te. Karmanyani hasse bhavo bhavasse te. Durga sayo thari bhayat palayanam. Durga sayo thari bhayat palayanam. Kalatmano yat pramada yutasramaha. Kalatmano yat pramada ayutasramaha. Swatman Mane, Swatman Rate Kitati Dir Vidam Eha Swatman Rate Kitati Dir Vidam Eha O my Lord, my Lord, even the great sages become disturbed in their intelligence when they see that your uh, greatness engages in the fruitive work. Although you are free from all desires and you, you, that you take birth, although you are unborn, that you are you flee out of fear of the enemy and take shelter in a fort, although you are the controller of invincible time and that you enjoy the householder life surrounded by many women, although you enjoy in yourself purport. Pure devotees of the Lord are not very much concerned with philosophical speculation in regards to transcendental knowledge of the Lord, nor it is possible to inquire complete knowledge of the Lord. Whatever little knowledge they have about the Lord is sufficient for them because devotees are simply satisfied in hearing and chanting about the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. Thus, this gives them transcendental bliss, but some of the pastimes of the Lord appear contradictory even to such pure devotees and thus Uddhava asked the Lord about some of the contradictory incidents in his pastimes. The Lord is described as having nothing to do personally and it is actually so because even in the creation and sustenance of the material world, the Lord has nothing to do. It seems contradictory then to hear the Lord personally lifts the Govardhan hill for the protection of his unallied 
unalloyed devotees the lord is supreme brahman absolute truth the personality of god at appearing like a man but udava had doubts whether whether he could ha, whether he could have so many transcendental activities there is no difference between personality of god at and impersonal brahman how they can how how they can the lord have so many things to do whereas impersonal brahman is stated to have nothing to do either material or spiritually if the lord is unborn how then he is born as a son of vasudev and devaki he is fearful to kala the supreme fear and yet lord is afraid of frightening jarasan and takes and takes shelter in the fort how can one who is full in himself take pleasure in association of many women how he can take wives and just like a householder and take pleasure in the association of family members children relatives and parents all these apparently contradictory happening bewilders even the greatest scholars who thus bewildered cannot understand whether inactivity is a fact or whether his activities are only limitations the solution is that the lord has nothing to do with the anything mundane all his activities are transcendental and this cannot be understood by mundane speculator for the mundane speculator there is certain kind of bewilderment but for the transcendental devotees there is nothing astonishing in this the brahman conception of the absolute truth is certainly the negation of all mundane activities but par brahm conception is full of with the transcendental activities one who knows this distinction between conception of brahman and conception of supreme brahman is certainly real trans, uh, transcendentalist there is no bewilderment for such transcendentalist the lord himself also declares in bhagavad gita 10.2 even the great sages and demigods can no can hardly know me anything about my activities and and transcendental potencies so the right explanation of the lord activities is given in uh, by uh, bishma dev bhagavat uh, bhagavatam 1.9.16 as follow na hi ayya na hi asya kare chetra jan puman ved vidit sitam yad vijigyasaya yukta muyanti kavyo bihi thank you so this about basically verse about bewilderment nayas karhi chindrajan pyaman ved vidit sitam ved vigya sa yukta muyanti kavi upi but even the kavi is also very intelligent people they have become bewildered by krishna's past times hmm. so that's why what you should do just follow the instructions and uh udav is talking about the bewilderment in this particular verse karmani anihasya bhavo avasate so karmani anihasya means lord has nothing to do but still he sometimes even seems to perform the karma kand activities so that is the reason we have to take shelter of devotees to practice devotion service just by uh, doing things on our own we can't understand krishna so we find in north india especially so many people are bewildered about position of lord ram and that is why even after reading books like ram charitamrita sometimes people become they worship lord shiva only and the whole reason is that uh, uh lord ram worship lord shiva so similarly krishna in dwarka so somehow it is not very much highlighted in the shrimad bhagavatam would sometimes seem to engage in karma kand activities just to so the world what is an ideal grahastha ideal grahastha but is not a devotee so karmani ani se bhav avasate lord is unborn but it seems to be born from vasudev and devki durga sarayu athari bhayat palayana and he took shelter of a moat city in form of a moat it's like between the ocean dwarka was there so that no enemies would come and attack him hmm. 
and he's time personified and still flees away from the enemies he is self controlled self satisfied still he takes shelter of so many women so seeing that <coughs> udav says that i become bewildered and that is the reason when sometimes our devotees become very morose by saying that no prabhu this this fellow is not understanding krishna that fellow is speaking ill, Ill about krishna even great devotees are bewildered about activities of krishna what to say of outsiders outsiders will be suddenly bewildered about krishna that's when certain religions one of the very famous religion they blaspheme krishna like anything we are talking about jains jains will blaspheme krishna like anything and the reason is they all are bewildered but just by one's activities one can't or by one's austerities one cannot understand krishna krishna can be understood only through bhakti process of bhakti so this uh, purport reveals that now please read 17 and 18 the translation oh my lord your eternal self is never divided by the influence of time and there is no limitation to your perfect knowledge thus you were sufficiently able to consult with yourself yet you called upon me for consultation as if bewildered although you are never bewildered and this act of yours bewilders me please read 18th also my lord kindly explain to us if you think us competent to receive it that transcendental knowledge which gives enlightenment about yourself and which you explained before to brahma ji ah so then udava starts speaking to krishna that my dear lord your knowledge is perfect despite that you would consult me for different decisions as if you are unaware you are bewildered like when two letters came simultaneously one letter came from the kings imprisoned by jarasandha so they said that my dear lord this fellow is going to sacrifice us on the altar of kal bhairav please save our lives at the same time a letter came from yudhishthira maharaj saying that my dear lord we have to do your rashi yagya please come here so all the yadavas says said you know hello rashi yagya you know we will go and fight because they were very eager to fight they are chatriyas but uh, krishna was bewildered krishna said that no but uh, yudhishthira is also my dear friend as well as he the emperor of the world so then what to do so then udava suggested my dear lord you can do both the things you go to rashi sacrifice and in order to perform rashi sacrifice one is supposed to conquer the world so you don't have to directly kill jarasandha you can get him killed by the agency of bhim krishna said very good idea you know i never thought about it and udo becomes bewildered that you are saying i never thought about it before a thought comes in the mind of a jiva parmatma knows it so then how can you say that you don't know, know about it so in this way he talks about his bewilderment so he says that's why my dear lord i know that you are you are the most intelligent person in the creation so now i want to hear from you please speak the knowledge please speak the same knowledge which you gave to brahma now oh, please read 19th translation and purport yes 19 translation when i thus express my heartfelt desires unto the supreme personality of god that the lotus side lord instructed me about his transcendental situation purport the verse pramam the verse pramam sthitam the are significant in this verse the lord's transcendental situation was not even spoken of to brahma when the four verses of primad bhagavatam 2.9.33 uh, 2.936 were explained this transcendental situation comprises this these dealings with devotees engaged in transcendental living service as exhibited at Dwarka and Vrindavan. When the Lord 
explain the specific transcendental situation. It was meant for Uddhav only. And therefore, Uddhav particularly said, Mayam, unto me, all to the great sage Maitreya, was also sitting there. Such a transcendental situation is hardly understood by those whose devotion is mixed with specific, with speculative knowledge or fruitive activities. The Lord's activities in confidential, in confidential love are very rarely disclosed to the general devotees who are attracted by devotion mixed with knowledge and mysticism. Such activities are the inconceivable pastimes of sin. So, Lord is now going to explain this knowledge, but it is meant for Uddhav only, although Maitreya was also there nearby. And the reason given is that if somebody is practicing Misra Bhakti, Bhakti mixed with Karma and Gyan, etc., such a person can't understand Lord's confidential activities. It is only for the people who are uh, uh, very much connected to the Lord or who really love the Lord with, uh, and worship the Lord by pure devotion service, only they can understand. So Udhava can understand, but Maitre can understand. Now, please read 20, 21, 22 transcriptions. Sorry, I have a question. Yes, Tala uh, Here, Brahmaji is also excluded that Brahmaji was also not explained. Whereas in four shloki Bhagavatam, everything is explained. Can you please clarify? Okay. So in Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam, uh, knowledge about Lord relationship with this world is explained. But in Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam, also Lord's activities in the spiritual world are not explained. We have verses like now, Riti Artham Yatriti Yeta Na Prati Chatmani Kadvidya Atman Mayam Yatha Bhasya Ratama. That uh, anything which is valuable in this world has connection with me, otherwise it is Maya. So that's more of a knowledge of Lord's presence to be felt in this world. But the details of Lord's pastimes in the spiritual world, they are not revealed in the Tatis Loki So that is how things are a bit different. They are not same. And that is the reason so many great personalities, including uh, uh, Narad Muni, Vyasa himself, they are sitting in the assembly where Sukhdev Goswami was speaking. Because Sukhdev Goswami's explanations about Bhagavatam are filled with nectarine pastimes of the Lord, which are revealed. And because he is the parrot of Radharani, he knows all those parts. Radha Kesapu, does it answer question? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, look many help you anymore, sir. Radharani in the Bhagavatam. Okay, Bhagavatam, it is not mentioned anywhere. And uh, about Sukhdev Goswami, the elaborate pastime is given in Brahma Vaivar, the Quran. And some of the purpose Prabhupada has put it from Brahma Vaivar, the Quran, the pastime of uh, Sukhdev Goswami. So there's something which okay. is not there in Bhagavatam, but it is well known fact because it has come from different Puranas. And that is the reason the Buddhist quote there. Okay, thank you. Please read uh, 20 to 22. Hare Krishna. Text 20, Translation. I have studied the path of understanding self knowledge from my spiritual master, the personality of God. And thus, after circumambulating him, I have come to the, in this place very much aggrieved due to se separation. Text 20. By the Vidura, now I am made for want of the pleasure of seeing him. And just to mitigate this, I am now proceeding to Bad Badrika Ashrama in the Himalayas for association, as I have been instructed by him. Text 22. There is Badrika Ashrama, the personality of Godhead, and his incarnation as the sages Nara and Narayana 
has been undergoing great penance since time immemorial for the for the welfare of all amiable living entities. Thank you. So then he's heard the knowledge from the Lord in the form of Uttav Gita. It's a masterpiece of knowledge. There's no knowledge beyond it. Somehow, Rupada depart from this world before giving purpose to Uddhav Gita. So unfortunately, because of that, many of the devotees also don't go through Uddhav Gita. But Uddhav Gita is really a masterpiece of knowledge. Things are given in such a perfection that uh, there's no knowledge beyond it. Like Krishna speaks very beautiful definition. I'll just give one two examples. Like Krishna gives the example of, of the definition of who is rich. One who has wealth equal to his desires or more than his desire is wealthy. Simple definition. Otherwise, no making a demarcation of who is rich and who is poor is very difficult. But one who has wealth equal to or more than his desire is rich. Who is in heaven? One who is in mode of goodness is in heaven. Even if somebody is in this world, but is in mode of goodness, then Satya Sanjata Gyana, so Sukham and Gyana are the uh, results of mode of goodness. So then one is in heaven. So even uh, speaking from external point of view, our things which and which have definition in this world, Uddhav Gita is really a masterpiece. How to surrender to Guru, given great elaboration. So that's why one of my uh, services which I am doing currently is writing the parallels of Bhagavad Gita and Uddhav Gita and how Bhagavad Gita is further explained as in Uddhav Gita. So Uddhav, and this is the hardest Uddhav Gita. And then he circumvented the Lord and left for Vadrika Ashram where Nana and Rishi are there along with all the sages. And the reason is because Lord gave that to everyone, but he didn't have an opportunity to meet Nana and Rishi and other sages in Badrika Ashram. And Uddhava was as intelligent as Krishna. Krishna really gave his intelligence to Uddhava. So then Krishna wanted Uddhava to go on his behalf because Lord couldn't directly meet the sages of Namasara, sorry, sages of uh, Badrika Ashram. Okay. Now, whether I sorting for speech and knowledge from Udava. This is the 23, 24, and 25. And then 25 per portal. After hearing from Udava all about the annihilation of his friends and relatives, the learned Vidura pacified his overwhelming bewilderment by dint of his transcendental knowledge. Text 24. While Uddhava, the chief and most confidential amongst the devotees of the Lord, was going away, Vidura in affection and confidence questioned him. Text 25. Vidura said, O Uddhava, because the servants of Vishnu, the Lord, wander in the interest of serving others, it is quite fit that you kindly describe the self-knowledge with which you have been enlightened by the Lord himself. Perfect. The servants of the Lord are actually the servants of society. They have no interest in human society other than to enlighten it in transcendental knowledge. They are interested in imparting knowledge of the relationship of the living being with the Supreme Lord. The activities in that transcendental relationship and the ultimate goal of human life, that is the real knowledge which can help society achieve the real aim of human welfare. Knowledge in the matter of the bodily necessities of eating, sleeping, matting, and fearing transform into various branches of advancement of knowledge is also temporary. A living being is not the material body, but an eternal part and parcel of the supreme being. And thus revival of his self-knowledge is essential. Without this knowledge, the human life is baffled. The servants of the Lord Vishnu are interested with this responsible work. And so they wander over the earth and to all other planets in the universe. Thus, the knowledge which was received by Udhava directly from the Lord deserves to be distributed in human society, especially to persons like Vidura, who are highly advanced in the devotional service of the Lord. 
real transcendental knowledge descends in the disciplic succession from the Lord to Udhav, from Udhav to Viduru, and so on. Such supreme transcendental knowledge is not possible to achieve by the process of imperfect speculation as performed by the so-called learned mundane wranglers. Vidura was anxious to know from Udhav that confidential knowledge known as Paramam Stitim, in which the Lord is known by his transcendental pastimes. Also, Vidura was older than Udhav. He was anxious to become a servant of Udhav in the transcendental relationship. This formula of transcendental disciplic succession is taught by Lord Chaitanya also. Lord Chaitanya advises that one receive transcendental knowledge from anyone whether a Brahman or a Shudra, a householder or a sannyasi, provided that the person is factually conversant with the science of Krishna. A person who knows the science of Krishna is factually a bona fide spiritual master. Thank you. So Prabhupada is uh, uh, emphasizing on accepting transcendent knowledge from whoever we get. Kiva Vipra Keva Nasi Sudra Kanonai so Lord Chaitanya was a sannyasi on the highest order, born Brahmana. Despite that, he accepted knowledge from Ramanandara, who was a grahastha, who was a politician, as well as he was a sudra. So, so in this way, it doesn't matter what person's position is there, in the social system. Whoever speaks about Krishna, we can hear from him, him or her, anyone. Similarly, we uh, find same thing here. That although Vidura is like very, very senior in age to Uddhava, but despite that, Vidura is ready to hear from Uddhava. Because he knows that Uddhava is very dear to Krishna, such a confidential servant of Krishna that Krishna sent Uddhava to Vindavan to understand the greatness of the love of the Vrajavasis. Krishna would consider Uddhava as good as himself. That's why Vidura was very anxious to hear from Uddhava. Not worrying about, oh no, he's a junior in age, how can I hear from him? He didn't care for that. So that is how. He was ready to connect with the disciplic knowledge, success. Was Uddhava here from Krishna? Now Vidura wanted to hear from Uddhava. The same knowledge. Page 26 and 27. Hare Krishna. Is the only translation of purpose also? Only translation. 26. Text 26. Sri Uddhava said, You may take lessons from the great learned sage Matriam who is nearby and who is worshipable for reception of transcendental knowledge. He was directly instructed by the personality of Godhead while he was about to quit his mortal, this world, this mortal world. Text 27. Shuddev Goswami said, O King, after thus discussing with Vidura, the transcendental name, fame, qualities, etc. on the bank of Jamna, uh, Uttava was overwhelmed with the great affliction. He passed the nights as if it were a moment and thereafter he went away. Thank you. Uh, even it's 26 per foot of 26 per foot. Per foot of 26. From here. Uh, you have in your, uh, your Bhagavatam there? Yeah. And uh, then you can just see from the per foot 26. Per foot of 26 text. <laughs> Although one may be well versed in the transcendental science, one should be careful about the offense of Maryada Vetti Krabha or impertinently surpassing a greater personality. According to scriptural injunction, one should be very careful of transgressing the law of Maryada Vetti Krabha because by so doing one loses his duration of life, his opulence, fame and piety and the blessings of the, all the world. To be well versed in the transcendental science, necess to be well versed in the transcendental science uh, necessitates awareness of the techniques of spiritual science. Uddhava, being well aware of all these technicalities of transcendental science, advised Vidura to approach Matre Rishi to receive transcendental knowledge. 
Vidura wanted to accept Uddhava as his spiritual master, but Uddhava did not accept the post because Vidura was as old as Uddhava's father, and therefore Uddhava could not accept him as his disciple, especially when Maitre was present nearby. The rule is that in the presence of higher personality, one should not be very eager to impart instructions, even if one is competent and well versed. So Uddhava decided to send an elderly person like Vidura to Maitre, another elderly person, but he was well versed also because he was directly instructed by the Lord while he was about to quit this mortal world. Since both Uddhava and Maitre were directly instructed by the Lord, both had the authority to become the spiritual master of Vidura or anyone else. But Maitre, being elderly, had the first claim to becoming the spiritual master, especially for Vidura, who was much older than Uddhava. One should not be eager to become a spiritual master cheaply for the sake of profit and fame, but should become a spiritual master only for the service of the Lord. The Lord never tolerates the impertinence of Maryada Vyati Trama. One should never pass over the honor due to an elderly spiritual master in the interests of one's own personal gain and fame. Impertinence on the part of the pseudo-spiritual master is very risky to progressive spiritual realization. Thank you. So, Prabhupada writes the reason why Udava didn't speak to Matrimony, although he had directly heard from Krishna. Because Matrimony is elderly to Udava. Matrimony is friend of Yasdev. And Matrimony was also there, who, was, who had heard the same knowledge with Krishna to Udava. And as far as Vidura was concerned, Vidura was elderly to him in age. So that's why although anybody who is well versed about the knowledge of uh, uh, Krishna consciousness can speak. But if there is an alternate of having a more realized or more elderly person, it's better that an elderly and unrealized person speaks. So devotees also get some bewilderment like that. So now I wanted to check with all of you. Let us say if you are giving a Bhagavatam class in the uh, temple. And suppose some very senior devotee comes there. Maybe your Siksha Guru or Diksha Guru or uh, any other Prabhupada disciple comes there. Then what will you do? Okay, if a per, if a situation is like a person and any uh, any devotee is giving Bhagavatam and sitting on the Vyasasam, so it's not necessary. Uh, like uh, he should stand up, but for sure he would sitting on the Vyasasam. He would pay the obeisance and uh, on the mic only he uh, he would say like that. We welcome you, Prabhuji, or some something like this. So, of course. Uh, I I uh, I know that past time of Rome Harshan, but there is no. I asked this question earlier in the Bhagavatam session. So this is what can be done. Good, good answer. Okay, finally she gives the complete answer. So actually speaking, if we are not in temple hall, we are at other place. We should get up and pay obeisances. Uh, we generally don't pay obeisances in front of the deities. Unfortunately, what happens in India is very much unavoidable. So even in front of DTs, if some senior devotees come, people have a tendency to pay obeisances. So I would remember when uh, he was there. Uh -huh. Bhakti Madhur Govind Maharaj. So people would pay him obeisances and he would beat them with danda. Hey, you have not heard NOD? Huh? You, you know, how can you pay obeisances in front of DTs? And that is the reason many times we are not supposed to be obeisance in front of the deities. But if some very senior devotees are there, I have personally done that, that we can get up from even Vyasasana and we can request them that Maharaj or Prabhuji, you can come and visit us. And if they permit and they say, no, 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 you continue the class, then we can just like you now praise them and continue the class. And generally, they tell to continue. They never say, oh, no, you get, get down from Vyasana and come and give class. Generally, they don't do like that. 
but we should be ready so that's an etiquette and really speaking as far as uh, are krishna okay so still i'm audible what's the problem <coughs> so as far as uh, uh okay fine another internet sound working as far as other devotees are concerned ah uh, sorry as far as ha uh, elderly devotees are concerned so in general if somebody's devotee things are different but many times if somebody is too elderly in age the tendency is not that to hear very submissively now that's not the case with vidura but that happens many times and there is a, that is why the reason which is given here that we should not speak in front of very elderly personality is given here like i remember that uh, one person who sleeps in all my classes and who gives feedback for every class he is my father as soon as i give a class he would go to sleep and then most of the times the feedback comes is that you speak so fast that people go to sleep and the only person sleeping in the class is my father and the reason is age so when somebody has such a age somebody who has brought you up then generally they can cannot hear they are meant to find faults so it's like a, a spiritual master and a father is supposed to find faults with the son or the disciple so he he does the right thing so he is the best person to give me feedback no nobody gives as much as my father gives so that is necessarily there and that is the reason that maryada is there some elderly person is there give him respect allow him to speak unless until we are, we are given that service to speak If the service that then things are different we can't like cross over the management and do anything but uh, if it is like an independence is there then we should allow the people at the higher order to speak is daruga krishna to your question Yes, that was question two. Ah, uh, you are mute too. Hare Krishna. So there were. I remember I had seen one video where uh, Radhesham Prabhu was giving class in the on Vyasa Sam, mm-hmm. and there in the class silently His Holiness Radha Nath Maharaj came and he sat in the class. Mm-hmm. So Radha uh, Radhesham Prabhu didn't notice, but as soon as he noticed, he immediately jumped down from the Vyasa Sam. and he was not ready to give the class in front of his guru and then he was requesting radhanath maharaj to give class but radhanath maharaj saying that you give so till the time he was sitting in the class radhanath maharaj he was not on the vyasasan so when then maharaj thought to let's go from the class so when he uh, went out from the class then only the radha shampu got ready to give the class continue the class so i was thinking that at least in front of the guru uh, the yeah, guru should be given chance or should at least some generally he gives permission to go and speak and mm-hmm. otherwise for senior devotees we could ask take permission so, prabhu ji you can come and give class and at least etiquette wise also we should not speak or we should not show that we know much in front of guru at least from we are learning, from whom we are learning everything by the blessings of him is this yeah. right understanding prabhu ji yeah see sometimes we may not have to go and sit in the ground as such and uh, it's like you no know, uh so we find that uh, when propad would ask his disciple to speak many times and propad would sit in the class disciple would sit and speak so yes, their permission is there so the instruction so the instruction is there by spiritual master you have to follow but if he doesn't instruct then the general etiquette is we should not be here to speak that is the main Nice. Peter Master wants to you to speak. Then, with a the mood of service to him, that no, he wants to maybe test my knowledge, test my intelligence. So then we may sit and speak. But generally, we should not be eager to show our philosophy and knowledge in front of this. So that's there. So whatever he instructs, we should do. Yes, right, boss. Thank you. But good example. 
Yes, Amran Haritu, you also had some comment. Oh, yeah, one sir. Papaji Maharaj Papaji was giving us a Brahmachari class and answered in Brahman. And suddenly, with Moni Krishna, so he came in the class. So suddenly, he stood up from the Vyasas and he asked Papaji that he is using class here. So, so he, I told him that, no, I will give some comment on your class, but you please continue. So he continued to tell you. So I have seen that part of the class. Yeah, yeah. So in general, actually, senior devotees, they allow or they instruct only to continue because the main reason is they respect the management. So whatever manager is, uh, this is there, where is the located for the class, then they take But good example, how to be. Thank you. Okay, so now, the internet is not working at all. I think that's what we've got some problem. They help us now. But devotees have their own books. So somebody can read 28th, 29th translation, 20th translation, 29th translation per port. 28th translation? Yeah, and 29th translation and per port both. Okay. The king inquired, at the end of the pastime of the Lord of the Three Worlds, Sri Krishna, and after the disappearance of the members of the Vrishni and Bhuj dynasties, who were the best of the great commanders, why did Uddhava alone remain? Uh, Prabhuji, purpur or so? No, next one, translation purport. Next one, translation purport. Okay. 29. Shudhi Goswami replied, My dear king, the cursing of the Brahmanas was only a plea, but the actual fact was the supreme desire of the Lord. He wanted to disappear from the face of the earth after dispatching his excessively numerous family members. He thought to himself as follows. A puppet as well now? Yeah. Please. In this verse, the word Tekshan is very significant in relation to the Lord Shri Krishna leaving his body. Since he is the eternal form of existence, knowledge and bliss, his body and his self are identical. Therefore, how is it possible that he would leave his body and then disappear from the vision of the world? There is a great controversy among us the known devotees are Mayavadis about the mysterious disappearance of the Lord and the doubts about those men with a poor fund of knowledge have been very elaborately cleared by Sri Shilaji Goswami in his Krishna Sandar. According to Brahm Sahita, the Lord has many forms. It is stated therein that the Lord has innumerable forms and when he appears within the vision of the living entities as Lord Krishna actually appeared, all such forms amalgamate with him. Beside all these infallible forms, he has his universal form as manifested before Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Here in this verse, the word Safitam is used, which indicates that he left his gignetic universal form called the Viratu, not his primeval eternal form, because there is hardly any possibility of his changing his form of Sachit Ananda. Brahm Sahita 5.1 This simple understanding is at once realized by the devotees of the Lord, but those who are known devotees who perform hardly any devotional service to the Lord either don't understand this simple fact or purposely raise a controversy to defeat the eternity of the transcendental body of the Lord. This is due to the defect called the cheating propensity of the imperfect living entities. By practical experience also, it is seen up to the present day that the Lord's transcendental form is worshipped by devotees in different temples. And 
all the devotees of the Lord factually realize that the form of the deity in the temple is no different from the form of the Lord. This inconceivable performance of the internal potency of the Lord is described in Bhagavad Gita 7.25 Naham Prakasha Sarvasya Yog Maya Samavrita. The Lord reserves the right of not being exposed to everyone. In the Padam Puran, it is said, Atash Shri Krishna Namadi Na Bhavet Graham Indriya Chatana Chata Mrita Madhya Leela 17.136. The name and the form of the Lord cannot be perceived by the material senses. But when he appears within the vision of the mundane people, he assumes the form of Viratru. This is an additional material exhibition of form and is supported by the logic of a subject and its objectives. In grammar, when an adjective is taken away from the subject, the subject it modifies doesn't change. Similarly, when the Lord quits his Virat troop, his eternal form doesn't change. Although there is no material difference between himself and any one of his innumerable forms. In the fifth canto, it will be seen how the Lord is worshipped in different planets in his different forms, even now. And how he is worshipped in different temples of this earth also. Srila Jigo Swami and Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur have very elaborately explained this incident of Lord's disappearance in their commentaries, quoting various authentic versions of the Vedic literatures. We purposely don't include them all here to avoid an increase in the volume of this book. The entire matter is explained in the Bhagavad Gita as quoted above. The Lord reserves the right of not being exposed to everyone. He always keeps himself out of the vision of the known devotees who are devoid of love and devotion and thus he puts them still further away from the Lord. The Lord appeared on the invitation of Brahma who played before the uh, who prayed before the Kshirodakshai Vishnu and therefore when the Lord appeared all the form of Vishnu amalgamated with him. And when the mission was fulfilled, all of them separated from him in the usual course. Thank you. So Prabhupada talks about necessity of being a devotee if you want to really understand Krishna. And now 32, 32 will learn the reason why Krishna sent Uddhava to Padrikasa. So please read 30, 31, 32 translation. Now I shall leave the vision of this mundane world and I see that Uddhava, the foremost of my devotees, is the only one who can be directly interested with knowledge about me. 31. Uddhava is not inferior to me in any way because he is never affected by the modes of material nature. Therefore, he may remain in this world in order to disseminate specific knowledge of the personality of Godhead. 32. Shukdev Goswami informed the king that Uddhava, being thus instructed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the source of all Vedic knowledge and the spiritual master of the three worlds, reached the pilgrimage site of Badrika Ashram and engaged himself there in trance to satisfy the Lord. So why Lord didn't send Uddhava alive? Why Uddhava didn't go back to order it along with Krishna? Because he had a great work of disseminating the same knowledge which Krishna wanted to give to the sages of Badrika Ashram. So Uddhava went there, gave them the message of Krishna, and then he is like now in trance, just being absorbed in Krishna. N now there is description about Vidura's enlightenment. Yeah. So please read 33, 34, 35, and 36 also. All Text 33. Vidura also heard from Uddhava about the appearance and disappearance of Lord Krishna, the super soul in the mortal world which is a subject matter sought after with great perseverance by the great sages. Text 34 
the lord's glorious acts and his acceptance of various transcendental forms for the performance of extraordinary pastimes in the mortal world are very difficult for anyone other than his devotees to understand and for the beast they are simply a mental disturbance text 35 understanding that he was remembered by lord krishna while quitting this world vidura began to cry loudly overwhelmed by the ecstasy of love text 36 after passing a few days on the bank of river yamuna vidura the self realized soul reached the banks of the ganges where the great sage maitreya was situated so the conversation between uh, udava and vidura and after knowing that krishna wanted udava to latin vidura and that is why he also arranged for maitreya to come there so that Mait- vidura can get that knowledge vidura was in tears and even while leaving this planet there are unlimited number of devotees krishna has still he remembered me and what to say of vidura krishna is personal with each and every devotee and that is why vidura went in tears and as instructed by udava now he is going to approach maitra muni to get that same knowledge which krishna gave to udava so that we'll discuss after 15 minutes so we'll start with chapter number 5 after 15 minutes and rukmini mata you have na this uh, So we'll start with chapter number 5 after 15. So 11.30 will come back. Thank you. Hare Krishna.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे यस रुक्मणी माता जी कैन यू डिस्प्ले द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर यस yeah. so next chapter is vidras talks with matreya <coughs> and uh, first nine verses vidras questions to matre is here explained then verse number 10 to 16 explains or uh, describes about vidras exclusive interest in hearing krishna katha she said i have heard about so many high and lower topics now i'm tired i want to hear just krishna katha and uh, <coughs> then matre is here honored by vidra expresses gratitude for an opportunity to speak krishna katha and then 20 to 38 there is a matrasi describes about the primary creation basically it's called sarga and at the end there is a prayers by the elemental demigods or the tat devatas so there is correct so we'll start with verse number 1 uh, please read text 1 uh, translation shukdev goswami said vidura the best among the kuru dynasty who was perfect in devotional service to the lord thus reached the source of the celestial ganges river hardwar where matre the great fathomless learned sage of the world was seated vidura who was perfect in gentleness and satisfied in transcendence inquired from him so now vidura he went from vindavan to haridwar where matre was there and uh, the qualities of vidura who was inquiring from matre muni described here what is that he had the qualities like gentleness so he knew the proper behavior of approaching the supreme master and he was satisfied in transcendence that means he was not going to enquire anything about uh gross or subtle qualities that means sense gratification basically he was just going to speak here about krishna now this text is very famous and worth while memorizing so devotee can repeat after vidura vacha सुखाय कर्मी करोति लोक विंदेत भूय सद एव दुख युक्त भगवान वेन्न ट्रांसलेशन एंड दर्पोट Vidura said, "O oh great sage, everyone in this world engages in fruitive activities to attain happiness, but one finds neither satiation or negation of this thirst. On contrary, on contrary, one is only aggravated by such activities. Please, therefore, give us direction on how one should live for real happiness." Purport. Vidura asked Matre some common question which was not originally his intentions. Udhava asked Vidura to approach Matre Muni and to inquire 
into all the truth concerning the Lord, his name, fame, quality, form, pastime, and interest, etc. And thus, when Vidura approached Maitre, he, sh he sh should have asked only about the Lord. But out of his natural humility, he did not immediately ask about the Lord, but he inquired into subject which would be a great impor importance to a common man. A common man cannot understand the Lord. First, he, he, must first, he must first know the real position of his life under the influence of illusory energy. In illusion, one thinks that he can be happy only by fruitive activities, but actually happens is that one becomes more and more entangled in the network of action and reaction and does not find any solution to the problem of life. There is nice song in this connection. Because of a great desire to have all happiness in life, I built this house. But unfortunately, the whole scheme has turned to ashes because the house was un unexpected, uh, unexpectedly set on fire. The law of nature is like that. Everyone tries to be happy by planning in material world, but law of nature is so cruel that it sets the fire to one's schemes and the fruity worker is not happy in his schemes, nor there is any happiness or satiation of his continuous hankering for happiness. So, now Vidra was thinking that uh, as he had heard before, that although Matra was also standing nearby Uddhava, Krishna smiled at Uddhava and spoke the knowledge to Uddhava. So now, Vidra didn't want to ask Matra Muni directly, that please give me the knowledge or tell me what Krishna spoke to Uddhava. So whether Matra was willing to speak that, whether Maitreya have really understood what Krishna spoke and whether uh, he was ready to share that with uh, Vidura, he was not very sure. And that is the reason he asked indirectly. He said that, let me ask my own questions. And if Maitreya had really heard of that knowledge, he would certainly share that knowledge with me. And that is the reason he directly didn't ask about Krishna. Just starts asking about some basic questions which everybody has. So, what is the basic question? So, khai karmani karoti loko. So, in this world, people work very hard for sukha, for getting some pleasure. But nate sukha mane to paramamba. What happens is instead of getting pleasure in this world, they get displeasure and they are entangled in displeasure. How? Like, for example, just to get some financial security, people accumulate a lot of wealth and a lot of property in this world. But then what happens is, when we get some property, we have to protect that property also. So I personally, like I know about my own father. Now he's a very good devotee, he's a devotee, he's practicing since many, many years. But then... So many, so much struggle with property. Now he's also retired. So as soon as he was thinking, when he was doing job, he was thinking the day I'll get retired, immediately I'll pack my luggage and I go to temple and serve Krishna there. But then as soon as he got retired, somebody filed some case in our property. And it's totally illegal. It's very clear that it is, he doesn't have any paper fully on with us. But despite that, because he filed the case, now he has to go to advocate here, there are so many places. Uh, another other property was three friends purchased together, that division is going on. Again, he has to get involved in all those things. So then he was feeling that, no, I'm so entangled. So for final security, person collects money, person accumulates land, etc. But then same thing become the cause of one's distress. Because after constructing something, you have to maintain it also. Maintenance is also required. So in this world, people work very hard to secure wealth so that they can be happy later on. 
but on contrary what happens is same wealth needs maintenance and one has to work more harder so there is a distress rupat gives a very beautiful example in the of his purport of a house you we don't get house free of cost one has to accumulate wealth for that one has to work hard again one wants to save money and see whether the materials are proper then one has to get constructed himself otherwise one has to pay very high price if he wants to rely on some reliable civil engineer etc and then that's not the end one has to maintain it one has to maintain the house also and for whole day of work how much pleasure does person gets in the house only when he comes in the evening and in the morning time whole day is for work and night time whenever you sleep it is same we are in some other world so practically speaking for very less time so that is how one accumulates wealth accumulates properties for getting pleasure in this world but same thing become the cause of uh once displeasure then so he is asking what is the remedy what is the remedy and then he says that personalities like you live for giving the remedy so that is explained in this particular verse so there was a very famous verse worth all memorizing you can repeat after me janas krishna tavi mukhas deva adharmasilas sudukitas anugrahaye hacharanti nunam bhutani bhavyani janardanas ah uh, please read translation as well as purport a translation then purport oh my lord wetland tropic soul struggle travel on the earth on behalf of the supreme personality of god had to show compassion to the fallen souls who are adverse to the sense of subordination to the lord to be obedient to the wishes of the supreme lord is the natural position of every living entity but you but you only to pass mistakes a living being become adverse to the sense of subordination to the lord and suffers all the miseries of material existence no one has anything to do but render devotional service to the supreme lord shri krishna therefore any activity other than transcendental loving service to the lord is more or less a rebellious action against the supreme will all fruit of activity empirical philosophy and mysticism are more or less against the sense of subordination to the lord and any living entity engaged in such rebellious activities is more or less condemned by the laws of material nature which work under the subordination of the lord great unalloyed devotee of the lord are compassionate towards the fallen and therefore they travel all over the world with the mission of bringing soul back to god hai back to home such pure devotees of the lord carry the message of god hai in order to deliver the fallen soul and therefore the common man who is bewildered by the influence of the external energy of the lord should avail himself of their association thank you thank you so in this verse it has that personalities are like you uh, you appear for this purpose says janasya krishnat vimukhas so in general people who are krishna vimukh who turn their faces away from krishna why devad due to some reason some dev some some reason which is unknown and what people do adharma silas they engage in sinful activity hmm? and what is the result sudukhitas they become they suffer like anything but anugraha e charanti nunam 
personalities like you to do anugrah to best to mercy on others what do you do you move around the world charanti ha bhutani bhagwan janardan sir because ah uh, ah uh, jan ardan krishna is also called jan ardan one who destroy the suffering of people hmm so you know the solution and you travel the world to reveal this truth to everyone that the solution is only in the practice of krishna consciousness so that's why i want to hear from you yeah please read a fourth translation text fourth translation therefore o great sage please give me instruction on the transcendental devotional service of the lord so that he who is situated in the heart of everyone can be pleased to impart from within knowledge of the absolute truth in terms of the ancient vedic principles delivered only to those who are purified by the process of devotional service yeah so bhakti is the solution for all the sufferings of the people in the world that's why please give me bhakti which purifies the heart and removes the root of suffering and that is ignorance ignorance is the root of suffering there are so many times people are bewildered if they see that materially speaking even for devotees sometimes sufferings are not destroyed rather they increase so bhakti doesn't destroy suffering it removes or destroy the root of suffering itself and when the root of the suffering is destroyed everything is automatically destroyed so bhakti doesn't just cuts off the branches and the twigs and the leaves etc because even if you cut them they will grow again bhakti uproots the root itself and when root is destroyed it may seem for some time that branches twigs leaves are as they are but they gradually dry up they gradually dry up similarly for devotees also it seems sometimes prarabdha karmas are not destroyed because they are the last one to get destroyed the manifested uh, sinful reactions but they gradually vanish because the root itself is destroyed hmm. like if somebody may see in the life of a narad muni narad boy so from childhood there were sufferings born to a maid servant who had no other shelter no narad muni never uh, met his father or he was not aware of the father and then after meeting bhakti vedantas it is not like narada boy suffering reduced from external point of view four months they stayed he served them what was the result the only shelter of a five year old boy mother was bitten by a serpent somebody say are what is the use of no serving the sadhus but narada because his root of suffering was destroyed that is avidya he took it as blessings of the lord very nice you know my last nerve of attachment is destroyed now now i can i am free to follow the instructions of these bhakti vedantas so immediately he left the house for going to the north and he started doing tapasya and what was the result at the end of the life he again appeared as perfected soul narad muni same thing with pandavas actually speaking so many sufferings from childhood it's like practically speaking suffering after suffering but then they were in bliss because they had perfection of life they had audience of krishna so that is how please tell me about bhakti bhakti gives the original knowledge and if one knows bhakti one can easily know all brahman parmatman bhagwan and that is why vidura is considered to be the ideal student who is enquiring about absolute truth yes please go to the next verse text uh, text 4 therefore o great uh, sage can i read it read it in text 5 na prabhu 
Text 4. Text 5 or 4. Text 5 and 6 we have to read. 5 and 6 we have to read. Ah, 5 and 6. Oh, great says, finally narrate how the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the independent, the godless Lord of the three worlds and the controller of, controller of all energies, accepts incarnation, incarnations and creates the cosmic manifestation with perfectly arranged regulated principles for its maintenance. Did I read the purport of No. And not proper, you need transitions of five and six. Uh, Matai, are you scrolling it down? Somehow it is not visible to me. Maybe it's visible to other devotees. No, it's not visible, Prabhuji. Okay. Hari uh, Srinivas, you can try. Maybe you can disconnect and connect again. Maybe, you know, uh, sharing. Then it may be visible. Is this visible now? Uh, it is coming up. Yeah, now it is visible. Okay. Yes, fifth and sixth is done. Then we'll go to seventh. Sixth is done, na? Yeah. No, six, 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 Prabhuji will read, na? Ah, Prabhuji will read. Please read sixth also, Prabhu. Aray Krishna. He lies down on his own heart, spread in the form of the sky, and thus placing the whole creation in that space. He expands himself into many living entities, which are manifested as different species of life. He does not have to endeavor for his maintenance, because he is the master of the powers and the proprietor of everything. Thus, he is distinct from the living entities. Yeah. So please describe about Mahavishnu, how he creates, maintains, and destroys this world. So, fine, you can describe out Govardhan Leela, but we also want to hear about Lord's dealing with this material world, Mahavishnu. So, how he maintains this world, how he, how he creates this world, please describe about it, about it. And how he sleeps in the Varaja River and then enters in the universe as Garbhodaksha Vishnu. So please explain about that also. And then text number seven, you can repeat after me. Kridan vidatte dvijago suranam chemaya karmani avatar bhede Mano Pitri Pyati Api Sran Vatamna Susloka Maulis Sarita Mritani Susloka Maulis Sarita Mritani Please read translation in the purport. Hare Krishna, you may narrate also about the auspicious characteristics of the Lord and his different incarnations for the welfare of the twice born, the cows and the demigods. Our minds are never satisfied completely, although we continuously hear of his transcendental activities. The Lord appears in this universe in different incarnations like Mat Matsya, Purma, Varaha, and Nrisamha. And he manifests his different transcendental activities for the welfare of the twice born, the cows, and the demigods. The Lord is directly concerned with the twice born or civilized man, a civilized man is one who has taken his birth twice. A living entity takes birth from this mundane world due to the union of male and female. A human being is born due to the union of the father and mother, but the civilized human being has, not, has another birth 
by contact with a spiritual master who becomes the actual father. The father and mother of the material body are so only in one birth and in the next birth, the father and mother may be a different couple. But the bona fide spiritual master as the representative of the Lord is the eternal father because the spiritual master has the responsibility to lead the disciples the spiritual salvation or the ultimate goal of life. Therefore, a civilized man must be twice born, otherwise he is no more than the lower animals. The cow is the most important animal for developing the human body to perfection. The body can be maintained by any kind of food stuff, but cow's milk is particularly essential for developing the finer tissues of the human brain so that one can understand the intricacies of transcendental knowledge. A civilized man is expected to live on foodstuffs from com, 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 comprising fruits, vegetables, grains, sugar, and milk. The bull helps in the agriculture process of producing grain, etc. And thus, in one sense, the bull is the father of humankind, whereas the cow is the mother. For this supplies, for she supplies milk to human society. A civilized man is therefore expected to give all protection to the bulls and cows. The demigods or the living entities who live in the higher planets are far superior to human beings since they have better arrangements for living conditions. They, they live far more luxur luxuriously than human beings, yet they are all devotees of the Lord. The Lord incarnates in different forms. They, they are all in different forms, such as those of a fish, a tortoise, a hog, a com combined lion and man, etc. Just to give protection to civilized men, the cow and the demigod, who, uh, who are directly responsible for the regulative life of progressive self-realization. The whole system of the material creation is planned so that the conditioned souls may have the opportunity for self-realization. One who takes advantage of, uh, as advantage of such an arrangement is called a demigod or civilized man. The cow is meant to help maintain such a high standard of life. The Lord's pastimes for the protection of the twice born civilized men, the cow, cows and the demigods are all transcendental. I mean, a human being is inclined to hear good narrations and stories and therefore they are so, there are so many books, magazines and newspapers on the market to satisfy the interest of the developed soul. But the pleasure in such literature after after it is read once becomes stale and people do not take any interest in reading such literature repeatedly. In fact, new, newspapers are read for less than an hour and then thrown in the dustbins as rubbish. The, the case is similar with all other modern literatures, but the beauty of transcendental literatures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam is that they never become old. They have been read in the world by civilized men for the last 5,000 years, and they have never become old. They are ever fresh to, fresh to the learned scholars and devotees. And even by daily repetition of the verses of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, there is no satiation for devotees like Vidura. Vidura might have heard the past tense of the Lord many, many times before he met Maitre. But still he wanted the same narrations to be repeated because he was never satiated by hearing them. That is the transcendental nature of the Lord's glorious pastimes. So, in this verse, he said that, please describe about Leela Uttaras also. Uh, so, in the previous verses, he was asking to, he was a question to hear about Prusataras. Garbha Daksha Vishnu, Karna Daksha Vishnu, and Sri Daksha Vishnu. And in this verse, he is requesting to hear about Leela Avataras as well as Krishna. Krishna is described here as Dvij Gosurana. That he loves Brahmanas, cows, and the demigods. Because all three of them are in mode of goodness and they work for the welfare of the society. Huh? And he says, our mind is not satisfied as much as you speak out Krishna Gata. Keep on speaking Krishna Gata. So he expresses his desire to hear Krishna Gata. Now please continue with 8th, 9th and 10th. 
Text 8. The supreme king of all kings has created different planets and places of habitation where living entities are situated in terms of the modes of nature and work, and he has created their different kings and rulers. 9. O chief amongst the Brahmaras, please also describe how Narayan, the creator of the universe and the self-sufficient Lord, has differently created the natures, activities, forms, features, and names of the different living creatures. Thank you. Thank you. So, so he says that please describe the how Lord of all planets produces various planets. Adi Lokanatho. Hmm. He creates their Lokpalas. The protector of the various elements and the planets. How he creates the world beyond local oak mountain. That is transcendental realm. Please describe about types of living entities. How they get their different bodies. And how they are seen according to different qualification. Because there are many living entities who are not visible to our eyes. So who can see them, who cannot see them? Please describe about how Lord does primary creation and also Brahma does a secondary creation. So Visarga Atma Yunir. Uh, so Visarga. So please speak about the secondary creation also. How Brahma creates this universe, produces different Varieties of living entities with their natures, forms, names, etc. So basically, this was the question about asking. Uh, about uh, Purasavataras, Leelavataras and secondary creation also. Subsequent creation. So primary creation is called Sarga. Secondary creation is called Visarga. So please explain about both of them along with Leelavataras. Yeah. Now, uh, Maitre Muni may ask a question that you have already heard about Mahabharat. Hmm? So why you don't want to hear about Mahabharat? And then Vidura expresses his eagerness for hearing Krishna Katha from text 10 onwards. Please read 10th, 11th, 12th. Oh my Lord, I have repeatedly heard about these higher and lower statuses of human society from the mouth of Vyasudev and I am quite satiated with the, all, the, all these lesser subject matters and their happiness. They have not satisfied me with the nectar of topics about Krishna. Now please uh, wait. So now what we'll do, then we'll read our verse also. The tenth is also a very important verse. So what he says is, I have heard a lot about Mahabharat. So in Mahabharat, Mahabharat is considered a very excellent book because Mahabharat talks about different levels of dharma. They are very vividly discussed and written in Mahabharat. And just because Vyasadeva wrote Mahabharat, Parasar Muni said that he is Upanipasandi of Godhead. Parasar Muni said that I was also a Vyas in last to last Chatur Yoga. So last to last Vyas Dev was Parasar Muni. Current Vyas Dev is Krishna Dvapan Vyas. So he says that my son Krishna Dvapan Vyas is definitely Supreme Person of Godhead because he has written Mahabharat. So very nice description is there in Mahabharat. Like we have Kam Sastras, above Kam Sastras are Arth Sastras, above Arth Sastras are Dharam Sastras. Our Dharma Sastras are Moksha Sastras. Hmm? Our Moksha Sastras are Sastras. Moksha Sastras are also called the Gyan Sastras, basically. The difference between body and soul and Brahman. Our Gyan Sastras are the Sastras which describe about Lord's dealing with his material nature or Lord's Paramatma form. How Lord creates, maintains, and destroys this world. But highest are the Bhakti Sastras. So Vidra says, as far as other Shastras are concerned, I have heard them a lot. This is higher, that is lower, this and that. And Vidra himself is Yamraj. It is Yamraj's daily activity to find which is who is doing Punna and who is doing Pap. 
Bhimara is super expert in that. So he said, I, I don't want to hear about that. I'm sick of hearing about it. Uh, like a fire is not satisfied by stick of woods. So I'm not satisfied with them. I want to hear the nectar of Krishna's pastime, Krishna Katha. Uh, so whatever you are going to speak, speak it with a mixture of sweetness of Krishna's pastimes. So I want to hear Krishna Katha. Yeah. And then he speaks this very famous verse number 11. This also going to repeat after me. This is really, really, really beautiful. Kastripnu yatirta pado vidanat Satre suva sura bhirid manat Satre suva suri bhirid manat Yakarna nadem purusa sayato Yakarna nadem purusa sayato chinati Please read 11th translation and purport both. Hare Krishna. Translation uh, Who in the human society can be satisfied without hearing sufficient talk of the Lord? Whose lotus feet are the sum total of all places of pilgrimage? And who is worshipped by great sages and devotees? Such topics can cut off one's bondage to family affection simply by entering the holes of one's ears. Purple. Krishna Katha is so powerful that simply by entering into a person's ear, it can at once give deliverance from the bondage of family affection. Family affection is an illusory manifestation of the external energy and it is the only impetus for all mundane activity. As long as there is mundane activity and the mind is absorbed in such engagement, one has to undergo the repetition of birth and death. In the current material nations, people are most influenced by the mode of ignorance and some are influenced by the passionate mode of material nature. And under the spell of these two modes, a living being is actuated by the material conception of life. The mundane qualities don't allow a uh, living entity to understand his real position. The qualities of both ignorance and passion strongly bind one to the illusory bodily conception of the self. The best among the fools who are thus deluded are those who engage in altruistic activities under the spell of the material mode of passion. Bhagavad Gita, which is the direct Krishna Katha, gives humanity the elementary lesson that the body is perishable and that the consciousness which is spread throughout the body is imperishable. The conscious thing, the imperishable self is eternally existent and cannot be killed under any circumstances, even after the dissolution of the body. Anyone who misunderstands this perishable body to be the self and who works for it in the name of sociology, politics, philanthropy, altruism, nationalism or internationalism under the false plea of the bodily conception of life is certainly a fool and doesn't know the implications of reality and unreality. Some of them are above the modes of ignorance and passion and are situated in the mode of goodness. But mundane goodness is always contaminated by tinges of ignorance and passion. Mundane goodness can enlighten one that the body and the self are different. And one in goodness is concerned with the self and not the body. But due to being contaminated, those in mundane goodness cannot understand the real nature of the self as a person. Their impersonal conception of the self as distinct from the body keeps them in the mode of goodness within material nature. And unless they are attracted by Krishna Katha, they will never be liberated from the bondage of material existence. Krishna Katha is the only remedy for all people of the world because it can situate one in pure consciousness of the self and liberate one from material bondage. To preach Krishna Katha all over the world as recommended by Lord Chaitanya is the greatest missionary activity. 
and all sensible men and women of the world may join in this great movement started by Lord Chaitanya. Thank you. Hare Hare. So, Ya Karna Nardim Purusasayato Bhava Pradam Gehratim Chanati. So, as soon as Krishna Katha enters in the ears, it creates such a sweet taste that persons. Bodily conception is completely destroyed. So that's why he says, Kastripnu Yat. How can one be satiated by hearing Krishna Gata? Now in text number 10, also you are describing that now one cannot be satiated by mental pleasures. But one cannot get satiated by mental pleasures because one doesn't get any happiness. That is any amount of mental pleasures one gets, one doesn't feel I'm happy. But Krishna Kata is opposite. One gets so much of happiness that one feels that I don't want to stop hearing Krishna Kata. So that is how when somebody hears Krishna Kata, he becomes blissful and he loses taste for everything else. So that is the result of hearing Krishna Kata. Now please read 12, text 12, translation. Your friend, the great sage Krishna Deva and Vyasa has already described the transcendental qualities of the Lord. He is great for the Mahabharata. But the whole idea is to draw the attention of the mass of the people to Krishna Kata, Bhagavad Gita, through their strong affinity for hearing mundane topics. So what he says is, that the Mahabharat is filled with topics of dharma, calm, but the purpose is to direct them towards Bhagavad Gita and Narayan. Basically, Bhagavad Gita, which is the central theme of Mahabharat. And that is how people gradually hear Bhagavad Gita, not in the So, whole Mahabharat is filled with politics, sociology, adventure, tragedy. That is like a big laddu inside which the medicine is kept. So if a child doesn't eat medicine directly to get cured of ignorance, then mother puts the medicine inside laddu and feeds the child. The same thing Vyasadeva has done. He has created so many adventures and at the Central point when the Mahabharat war is just going to begin, the council has blown. Bhagavad Gita is spoken, which is the essence of Mahabharat. But unfortunately, what happens is modern people are so expert that they remove the tablet and eat the laddu. So that is how many times even that mission also fails. So they they would discuss everything about Mahabharat except the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita comes and say, Oh, it's boring, you know. Go ahead. You just want to hear about Mahabharata. He says, I want to hear about it. I want to hear Krishna Gata directly. I'm tired of hearing about higher and lower species or higher or lower topics. Now, next verse is also very important. Sasra Sasra Sashardhanasya vivirdhamana virakti anyatra karoti punsaha virakti maniyatra karoti punsaha hare padanu smriti nirvritasya hare padanu smriti nivritasya samast dukha payama sudhatte samast dukha payama sudhatte for one who is anxious to engage constantly in hearing such topics, Krishna Katha gradually increases his indifference towards all other things. Such constant remembrance of the lotus feet of the Lord Krishna by the devotees who have achieved transcendental bliss. Thank you, Shri. Purport. We must certainly know Yet on the absolute plane, Krishna Katha and Krishna are one and the same. 
the Lord is the absolute truth. And therefore, his name, form, quality, etc., which are all understood to be Krishna Katha, are non-different from him. Bhava Gita being spoken by the Lord is as good as the Lord himself. When a sincere devotee reads Bhava Gita, this is as good as seeing the Lord face to face in his personal presence. But this is not so far the mundane wrangler. All the potencies of the Lord are there when one reads Bhava Gita, provided it is read in a way recommended in the Gita by the Lord Himself. One cannot foolishly manufacture an interpretation of Bhava Gita and still bring about transcendental benefit. Anyone who tries to squeeze some artificial meaning, there is some disturbance. Anyone who tries to squeeze some artificial meaning or uh, you can mute for the time being. Anyone who tries to squeeze some artificial meaning or interpretation from Bhagavad Gita for an ulterior motive is not Shardhana Punsa, one engaged anxiously in the bona fide hearing of Krishna Katha. Such a person cannot derive any benefit from reading Bhagavad Gita. Whoever is a great scholar, he may be in the estimation of a layman. The Shardhana or the faithful devotee can actually derive all the benefits of Bhagavad Gita because by the omnipotency of the Lord, he achieves the transcendental bliss, bliss which vanquishes attachment and nullifies all concomitant material miseries. Only the devotee by his factual experience can understand the import of this verse spoken by Vidura. The purity of the Lord enjoys life by constantly remembering the lotus feet of the Lord by hearing Krishna Katha. For such a devotee, there is no such thing as material resistance and the much advertised bliss of Brahmananda like, is like a fig for the devotee who is in the midst of the transcendental ocean of bliss. Thank you, Prabhuji. So, Sasarda Dhana Sevardhana Viraktim Annatra Karoti Pumsaha. So, this particular uh, Krishna Katha is so powerful that if constantly hears Krishna's topics, then one becomes indifferent to the rest of the other topics. Viraktim Annatra Karoti Pumsaha. And apart from that, what is the benefit? Hare Padanu Smriti Nirvitasya. One has constant remembrance of the lotus feet of the Lord. Samasta to Khape Masudasya. And in this way, complete sufferings of the person can be destroyed. So this is the solution, hearing Krishna Kata. So as I was asking you before, my dear uh, matrimony, that uh, people try to get rid of sufferings, but in their sufferings, how their sufferings can be destroyed by hearing Krishna Kata. So that's why please speak Krishna Kata. Because by hearing Krishna Kata, one gets so much pleasure that one doesn't like to hear anything else. So especially after uh, spending few years or some decades of Krishna consciousness, one gets sort of taste for hearing Krishna Kata. So I still remember there was one uh, very senior devotee from Middle uh, Africa, actually, African country. Ganga Patipu, something like that. He was attending uh, one of our Bhakti Vyava classes. It's very senior devotee. Like a temple president and some RGB level devotee. He's in the governing body. So he, when he was attending the class, he was hearing his realization. He says this cancer, he was suffering from cancer and he was admitted in uh, Bhaktivinoda Hospital in uh, Mumbai. So he was saying, when I hear Krishna Katha, then somehow this pain goes away. I don't remember this pain. And uh, as soon as Krishna Katha ends, pain comes back. So in this way, even on a physical level, Krishna Katha removes all the misery. 
Now, please read 14 translation. Who's here? Going to speak next? Post age person who, because of their sinful activities, are averse to the topics of transcendence and thus ignorant of the purpose of the Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita, are pitied by the pitiable. I I also pity them because I see how their duration of life is spoiled by eternal time. While well, they involve themselves in presentation of philosophical speculation, theoretical ultimate goals of life, and different modes of ritual. Yeah. Pan, soch, soch, sochan, avido anu soche. They are pitied by the pitied. So, people who think, uh, or who are averse to hearing Krishna Katha, they are most pitied. Why? Because we are searching for happiness on the wrong place. And when the right thing is coming in front of them, they want to get rid of that right thing and want to search it in the, some wrong place. That is why such people are pitied by the pitied because they don't know that the actual happiness will come by hearing Krishna account. There was, there's no other way, there's no other process. And uh, further he continues, 15. This is all the famous words, you can repeat after me. And when this is the word. Tadasya kausa ravasar madatur. Tadasya kausa ravasar madatur. Hari katha meva katha susaram. Translation and the purpose. O Maitreya, O friend of the distressed. The glories of the Supreme Lord can alone do good for people all over the world. Therefore, just as bees collect honey from flowers, kindly describe the essence of all topics, the topic of the Lord. Purpose. There are many topics for different persons in different modes of material nature, but the essential topics are those in relationship with the Supreme Lord. Unfortunately, materially affected conditioned souls are all more or less averse to topics of the Supreme Lord because some of them do not believe in the existence of God and some of them believe only in the impersonal feature of the Lord. In both cases, there is nothing for them to say of God. Both the non-believers and the impersonalists deny the essence of all topics. Therefore, they engage in topics of relativity in various ways, either in sense ratification or in mental speculation. For the pure devotees like Vidura, the topics of both the mundaners and the mental speculators are useless in all respects. Thus, Vidura requested Maitreya to talk of the essence only, the talks of Krishna and nothing else. So this Harikatha is Katham Eva Katha Susaram. It is the essence of all talks. So there may be a sense of all talks which are given Vedas and the essence of Vedas is Krishna Katha. So like a bee searches for the nectar in the flower. So bee doesn't search for other parts of the flower which may look very beautiful, pregnant, etc. It searches for the honey. So says, I also want to taste that honey of Krishna Katha. So please don't describe any other topic just describe Krishna Gata, that's all, nothing else. Now, Krishna Gata is also Katha of the Lord in relationship with this world. And he begins to ask, inquire about it, 
text. So please read uh, the translation text 16. Kindly chant all those superhuman transcendental activities of the Supreme Controller, the Personality of Godhead, who accepted incarnations fully equipped with all potency for the full manifestation and maintenance of the cosmic creation. Please tell me the description or how Garu Daksha, Karna Daksha, Nishiru Daksha, which one to create this world. Now, why this is very important for the devotees? And the reason I'm speaking about it is that sometimes devotees feel it very boring and they think that what is the need of hearing all these technicalities. So we should hear about Sri Vishnu for a very important reason. The reason is the same, Chataslobi Bhagavatam. Hriti artham et hriti eta na hriti chatman. My dear Brahma, if you see that something is valuable but is not connected to me, then that with that Atmano Mayam, understand this is my Maya. Yata Vasu Yatama, like there is an illusion in the darkness. So everything is connected to Krishna. And by hearing about creation repeatedly, we get a sense that how each one of us is situated within this lotus. It is a part of Garbhadak Vishnu. Our whole body is made up of 24 elements which is made up from the lotus made by Garbhadak Vishnu. That is his creation. And we are also part and parcel of Krishna. We are also energy of Krishna. So if we remain aware of it all the times, we will remain Krishna conscious all the times. And if we are Krishna conscious at all the times, even we may be dealing with matter unlimitedly, we can remain Krishna conscious at all the times. So that is the formula. And that is the reason this creation thing would come at so many places. It came in Bhagavad Gita, even in the middle six chapters, Prabhupada tracks in the purport, etc. Krishna speaks about Bhumira Ponalo, Vayu Khamano Muddhari, which Angaram with him, Vinna Pagdi Asada. And then it came in second canto, again it is coming in the third canto. Again it will come in elaboration in the eleventh canto again. And in between cantos also, many places, pray, by the meaning of prayers, these things are spoken. And why they are spoken repeatedly? For, because if we hear them repeatedly, we can be uh, aware of the fact of this fact all the times that we are with Krishna, whether we recognize it or don't recognize it. But we'll start recognizing it if we'll work a little harder to attentively hear this topic. So that's why now Sukhdeva Goswami will speak about how Matrasi expresses gratitude for getting an opportunity to speak Krishna Gata. Yes, so please read 17, 18, 19. Nice lesson. Sukhdeva Goswami said, the great sage Matra Muni, after owning, honoring Vidura very greatly, began to speak at Vidura request for the greatest welfare of the world. Text stating translation. Sri Matra said, O Vidura, all glory is unto you. You have inquired me of the greatest of all goodness, and thus you have shown your mercy both to the world and to me, and because your mind is always absorbed in my thoughts of transcendence. Text 19. O Vidura, it is not that all wonderful that you have so accepted the Lord without deviation of thought, for you were born from the semen of Vyasadev. So, Maitre starts glorifying Vidura for getting opportunity to hear Krishna Gata. He says, just to show mercy to everyone and you want to hear Krishna Gata and spread the glory of the Lord, you are asking all these questions. Because you are already absorbed in Krishna. You don't have to hear all these topics. Ah. And it's not very surprising that you are son of Vyasadev because he is son of Vyasadev and that maid servant. And you are endowed with pure bhakti. Because you have met our Lord directly. You are a great devotee of the Lord. And what to show that you were Yamraj, who is punisher of all living beings. 
but because of the curse of mandorisi you had to appear from the womb of the servant of vichitravir ah okay so you are not read 20th na no 17 18 19 only we have read yes this will come in 20th okay so please it 20 and 21 then i'll speak about it i know that you are now vidur due to the cursing of mandavya muni and that formerly you were king yamraj the great controller of living entities after their death you were begotten by the son of satyavati vyasadev in the kept wife of his brother your good self is one of the eternal associates of the supreme personality of godhead for whose sake the lord while going back to his abode left instructions with me so then he says i know that you are not ordinary person you are yamraj himself you are a great mahajan dharmasya tattam etam gohayam mahajena yad gata sapanta swayam na sambhu narad sambhu kumar kapil manu pralado janako bhishma balir vaisaki dhayam vayam ah so he is among the 12 mahajanas who knows the tattva of uh dharma properly very few people know dharma because dharma is like so difficult to understand but he is dharmaraj so he knows about dharma so he says we know that you are dharmaraj or yamraj but then what had happened is this mandava muni was caught by a king mistakenly somebody some thieves had done some tibri and mandava muni happened to be there and nowadays you know you may find that okay you know brahmachari are wearing dhoti kurta and uh, other men are wearing pant shirt so you can still identify but in vedic culture even thieves are wearing dhoti kurta <laughs> same clothes so then he was a scot and then king had ordered him also to be thrown in changa so he was actually thrown on changa but because he was a great rishi he could balance himself on that race swords by his yogic powers and of course lot of details are there then one leper comes to be carried by his wife who was going to meet one prostitute and he wrongly like hit the legs of mandava muni and mandava muni got pain and he cursed him also and later on uh, king recognized this mandava muni is a great saint so then he freed him but after his departure mandava muni asked told yamraj he told why was i punished so badly i had not done anything as far as i remember so then yamraj said that when you are small then you pierced a uh, an ant with a blade of grass so he said i was too small to be punished so you have done a mistake so i curse you to become the son of a maid servant and yamra said thank you very much i was fed up doing all these activities of sending this fellow fellow to hell that fellow to hell hmm? boil him like a puri cut him like a sabji not doing all this uh, activities i'm tired so this was thankless task i were doing now till now now i have opportunity to absorb myself in krishna katha but when he appeared again same thing happened he was there in the court along with his blind brother who was blind both by eyes and with his intelligence and when duryodhan cursed him then he said very nice now at least i am free now now i'll go out go to visit different holy places and just absorb myself in krishna katha so that is how vidra was previously yamraj okay and now we will directly quote come to the core topic of this chapter that is clear yeah please show the chart we will first explain the chart yeah. yes 
now devotees can be very attentive if you are inattentive for some time you lose everything so as we know krishna expands into balram balram expands into first chaturviva sankarsan of that chaturviva who is called uh mool sankarsan expands as all narayan forms in the spiritual world and then the expansion comes of second chaturviva in which the sankarsan is called mahasankarsan Mahasankarsan expands as Karnotakshai Vishnu in this material world. This material world is like a cloud in the spiritual sky. It's like a black cloud. And Karnotakshai Vishnu enters here and it diffuses away the darkness or removes the darkness by his Brahma Jyoti. And on his body lies eternal material nature this eternal material nature is called pradhan so you have to remember it it's called pradhan so pradhan is the eternal unmanifest material nature unmanifest means you cannot see it touch it think about it or know about it why because in pradhan three modes of material nature are there in balance there is no mode of passion excess of mode of passion so there is no creation and when there is no creation there is no question of maintenance in goodness when goodness gives maintenance and there is no creation there is nothing to destroy so there is no ignorance so all three modes goodness passion and ignorance are in balance that is like a kitchen which is locked and there's no activity going on so no activity goes on there and then maha vishnu or karnataksha vishnu he glances on that material nature and impregnates material nature with kal and jiva so kal is mahakal or lord shiva who is time factor and jivas are the living entities who were waiting to get gross and subtle bodies for the purpose of enjoying sense gratification so all these jivas are controlled by kal time factor so in material world unlike spiritual world time moves in only one direction thing which is gone is called past thing time when we are living is called present and time which is going to come is called future so it's unidirectional we can't bring back time old time it's not possible in spiritual world you can bring it back the difference between material world and spiritual world so time factor controls living entities in this world time factor assists in krishna's present krishna's past times in the spiritual world that means you can have day night whatever whenever you want for krishna service so in this way kal who is also called mahakal is lord shiva so along with lord shiva who is impregnated jivas are impregnated so that vision is called lord shiva or sambhu tatva so mahavishnu has 60 qualities and kal or mahaka lord shiva has 55 qualities whom he touches pradhan who is pradhan he is also called parvati or uma and that is the reason sometimes lord shiva and parvati are called eternal mother and father of all the living entities because lord shiva carries all the living entities from mahavishnu or or karnodaksha vishnu to pradhan or material nature so material nature becomes mother jiva are the children and kal or mahakal is called the father so that is how living entities are impregnated
And when husband touches the wife, Carl touches Pradhan, then she becomes agitated, which is signified by agitation of three emotions of material nature. Sattaguna, Rajaguna, Tamaguna. So agitated Pradhan is called Mahatattva. Unagitated material nature is called Pradhan. Agitated material nature is called Mahatattva. So I hope that's clear. So this uh, uh, Mahatattva, because it's agitated, some portion of Mahatattva will have Sattaguna in prominence. Some of them will have Rajaguna in prominence and some of them will have Tamaguna in prominence. So Mother, can you bring, scroll it a little down, the chart? Yes, thank you. So, the portion in which Sattaguna is prominent is sometimes called also Buddhi Tattva. The portion in which Rajaguna is prominent is called Sutra Tattva. And the portion in which Tamaguna is prominent is called Ahankar Tattva. So in this way, different places, different modes are prominent. And as we read in Bhagavad Gita, when mode of goodness is prominent, mode of passion and ignorance goes down. When mode of passion is prominent, mode of ignorance and mode of goodness are goes down. And when mode of ignorance increases, automatically mode of goodness and mode of passion goes down. So the portion in which Rajagon is prominent, Sutra Tattva, it contributes by giving an element called Chitta. Chitta. So that we will read further when we go proceed in uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavata. Kapil, Kapil Dev Siksha. And Ahankar in prominence, sorry, uh, Mahatata in prominence is called Ahankar. Now within Ahankar also there will be portions which are having more goodness, more passion, more ignorance. It's like saying animals are in mode of ignorance. Now, among animals, there are animals in goodness, animals in passion, and animals in ignorance. What are animals in goodness? Somebody can answer. Like cow. Cow. Ah, cow and elephant. They are considered to be or especially cows. Which is animal in mode of passion? Tiger. Yeah, lion tiger. They are in mode of passion. Which are animals in ignorance? Dog. Dog, pig, buffalo. Like when cows and buffaloes are moving, they look similar. But I have personally seen if you blow the horn, cows respond immediately Buffaloes don't respond. <laughs> That's why in Hindi they say now, bhans ke aange bin bajana. No. You blow an instrument in front of buffalo, no use. So they're in ignorance. So similarly, some portion of ahankar and goodness is prominent, some places passion is prominent, some places ignorance is prominent. But each of these steps are happening only because Mahavishnu is glancing. That's important. Now, portions where ahankar is prominent, sorry, mode of goodness is prominent, those portions of ahankar, they further generate other elements. So it's like opening of a flower. So that generates karta. Karta bhav means basically doers and mentality. Who has done that? I have done that. So that karta bhav, or that doers of mentality. From that comes jnan sakti, the knowledge of being aware, or power of being aware, jnan sakti. Further from that comes adidev, which I'll describe gradually, and I'll stop here only. Yeah. 
Then from ahankar comes mode of passion. Ahankar, which has mode of passion in prominence, comes karana. Karana means cause. Now, what is cause and what is kar called effect? Hmm? I'll give one example for that. Like for example, moving of my vocal cord is karan cause. Sound coming out of mouth, my mouth is car effect. Because vocal cord is moving in my mouth, the sound is being produced in my from my mouth. Now what happens is after some time, sound from my mouth becomes karan or cause, and the effect is that it enters in my microphone. and then because it enters then entering of the sound in the microphone becomes the cause and the effect is that it is coming out of your speaker that is the cause then the sound coming out of the speaker becomes the cause and sound entering in your ear becomes the effect then sound entering in your ear becomes the cause and your understanding becomes the effect so that is how all things in this world are done through the chain of cause and effect. But Sarva Karana Karanam is Krishna and the ultimate effect is also Krishna in the form of material energy. Hmm. So there is the Karan and Kar and along with Karan comes Kriya Sakti. Kriya Sakti means energy to do. That's called Kriya Sakti. And from there comes Adhyatma, which I'll explain a little gradually. From ignorance comes Kar, as I told before, effect. And comes Dravya Sakti. Dravya Sakti means basically the ingredients, gross ingredients. So that's called Dravya. Dravya means ingredients, so gross ingredients. And from that comes Adibhut. Now, further, I'll explain about this Adi, Adi Dev, Adhat Madhibhut. Before that, if somebody has a question, they can ask. Because I don't want to proceed unless until you understand. Yes, okay. I have a question. Okay. Ha, yes. Uh, probably, uh, we read in uh, second Kento that Kal comes after Pradhan is there to, to activate Mahatattva. And mm -hmm. here mentioned that the Kal is coming along with Jivas to create Pradhan. No, no, no. It's not coming to create. It is touching Pradhan. I never spoke that it is coming to create. It's touching Pradhan. It, Kal it, it and Jivas. Touching, huh, touching Pradhan. Achha, it is not working right now. Huh, Pradhan is not working right now. So when it touches, it starts working. Okay. So Pradhan is eternal. It remains throughout the whole night of Brahma. Sorry, whole night of, uh, I won't say whole night. It lies after inhalation and till the exhalation of Mahavishnu. So for such a long time, Pradhan remains. Material nature becomes manifest or unmanifest when material nature doesn't die. It is eternal. Okay. But what happens when uh, uh, Brahma spe uh, sleeps and uh, then gets up? No, that is other time. That time there is a prelaya only till Swargaloka, not beyond. That time entire even universe is there. What to say of other things? Uh, and what about the jivas? Jivas at that time, they sleep on the body of Garvodaksha Vishnu. Okay. okay, thank you. Mm. And the, during this time, they are sleeping on the body of Karnodaksa Vishnu. And they come out along with a glance of Karnodaksa Vishnu, which is composed of Kal. Okay, I hope this answers your question. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So, we'll go further. Is there some other question that we can ask? Okay. 
fine since there no other question because already you read in the second canto now other three things come is adidev adhyatma and adibhut all interactions are done by these three things adhyatma adibhut and adidev for example adhyatma means some things which i have like for example i have i i is called adhyatma adibhut is the thing which i am seeing let us say currently i am seeing a laptop made up of five metal elements and i can see only if the sanctioning authority of seeing allows it who is he that is surya dev that's he is called adi dev so by the interaction of adhyatma adibhut and adi dev the process of seeing becomes complete same thing is true with the ears also my ears will be called the adhyatma the sound will be called adi bhut and the sanctioning authorities are dik devatas devatas of directions they are called adi dev when all three when they sanction his sanctions sound is there to hear and my ears are there only then i can hear any of them are missing process is not complete ear is not there i can't hear ear is there but there is no sound i can't hear if sound is there ear is there but sanctioning authority doesn't sanction i can't hear so all three are required so that's adi dev adhyatma adi bhut now from adi dev comes mind and sense devatas so mind is that's why call in mode of goodness if mind is in mode of goodness it becomes one's friend it is controlled also 10 sense devata for each senses there are demigods as i told for i there is surya dev for speech there is agni for uh, taste there is varun dev we have a chart below so that i'll show later on so these 10 senses devata are there now from adhyatma further comes pran 10 senses and intelligence what is pran pran is basically the life air or life you can say in one sense so that's called pran ten senses means five karmendriyas five gyanendriyas five knowledge acquiring senses five working senses and uh, you have gone through second canto so i'll not explain them further and then there is intelligence we know about intelligence there is eight functions we will learn about them gradually and from adibhut comes five elements that is earth water fire air ether and five tanmatras tanmatras are sense objects ras roop gandh sabd sparsh for tasting there is ras for seeing there is roop for smelling there is gandh for hearing there is sabd and for touching there is sparsh so gandh is taken through nose roop is seen through eyes sabd is heard from ears ras is tasted from tongue and sparsh is done from skin touch is done from skin so these five tanmatras are there yes. please go further down yeah so no not for so much down you can show me the small charts yeah so these are ten senses and ten sense devatas for ears there is dik devata for eyes there is surya devata for skin there is vayu devata for nose there is ashwini kumaras for tongue there is varun devata for hands there is indra for feet there is upendra for voice there is agni for anus there is mitra for genital there is prajapati and uh, left hand side if you see in the uh, sorry now if you go towards right there are first five elements sun touch form taste smell are called tanmatras 
and ether air fire water earth is called the elements five elements you come with come from interaction of uh, ahankar with mode of ignorance now from sound comes ether from ether comes touch touch comes air air comes form from form comes fire fire comes taste taste comes water water comes smell and from smell comes earth and the later ones have the features of the previous ones so that is how they come yes uh, anand leela mataji you have a question yes so um, if you scroll little bit up the the ten senses yeah from here uh, it's there in both is the same ten senses it which is in adi daiv and adhyatma yeah yeah so these ten senses are then part of adhyatma only adhyatma expands it's like flower expanding into but it's expanding into flower so suddenly from adhyatma only these things come and then it is part of the adi daiv also like from this chart what it says yeah no 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 it's not it's like uh, adi dev are the devatas who are in charge of these ten senses like for example okay 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 i got it you understood na yeah so these devatas are the in charge it's like i am kitchen in charge doesn't mean i am kitchen so i am in charge of the kitchen okay yeah hari krishna ji ji ha ah, yes amar nari ko apo ji the devatas list has the name of upendra upendra is same uh, bahman dev bhagwan no 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 he's not bahman dev so chakravarti was very clear that this upendra is not bahman dev there's another demi god called upendra and we'll find that uh, this upendra all these demigods are even before the creation of brahma brahma is not created till now so all these elemental devatas they stay with mahavishnu and this set governs all the elements in all the universes it's like home ministry is there in central government and home ministry is there in state government but home ministry in state government is under the home ministry of central government so so this upendra is a demigod who stays with mahavishnu so does that answer your question okay so okay so these are the demigods who are in central government before the creation of brahma ah yes yes so they exist eternally they exist till the entire car creation is manifested but when mahavishnu breathes in now if they are pure devotees they will become manif- unmanifest and manifest again and if they are not pure devotees they are in charge is then someone else will become elemental devata for next creation Okay, does it answer your question? Hare Krishna, am I audible? Yes, you know. Yes, you. So you got your answer, Amrind Hari Pru, or I should repeat? Okay, okay, Pru, okay, Pru. Okay, yeah. So any government is remaining. Somebody has question. We can just stop the PPT now. Somebody has question. They can ask. Else we'll end end now. Hare Krishna. Fine. So since there are no questions, and even if devotees have questions, what they can do is, uh, devotees can send me just uh, through my uh, WhatsApp. You can send me a voice message, and I can answer it. So generally, I answer on the same day or the next day, so I can just answer it. And you can maybe even ask in that tomorrow's class also. Okay, so it's already one o'clock now. So we'll end here. Gandhara Shrimad Bhagavatam ki, Shilpa Pad ki, Vansha Kalpadru Vasha Karpasindu Vasha, Patana Pamne Vasha Vasha.
Should I close this? Yes, yes. Please, please uh, end the meeting for all.